It's been a year of experiencing the low grade fevers, brain fog, joint pain, muscle aches, dizzy spells, racing heartbeat, gastrointestinal issues. I actually have a long list. I can pull it up on my phone if you need me to, but I've, I've been experiencing all of these symptoms yeah, for nearly a year. Yeah, I'll pull them up. Hold on. I have to write so many things down because I do, I do forget things easily and I lose my words. I don't even know where to begin. I had it since March 23rd. From fainting to not being able to get out of my bed to extreme memory loss, not even being able to say my own name or even remember people in my phone who are calling me. I have tinnitus in the ears, which is the ringing in the ears. I have very bad fatigue still. And insomnia, I don't sleep at night. The other day I was having lunch with a friend and she said, oh, what are you, what are you having? And I looked down at my food and I couldn't tell her what it was. I started getting swollen lymph nodes in my neck and under my armpits. I would get these weird pains in my ribs and on my sides. And I couldn't walk to the end of my driveway. I still have very, no smell, very little taste. And I am used to climbing mountains at 12,000 feet, 13,000 feet, no problem. Can't walk to the end of my driveway without serious chest pain, bending over and almost passing out. And I went to the emergency room multiple times, but every time they said everything looked fine and they couldn't, they couldn't figure out what it was. And it wasn't until like one night I was looking on Reddit uh, and I saw some people have these experiences after getting COVID and I kind of started to put the pieces together. A year into the COVID-19 pandemic, doctors have very few answers about why some people develop persistent symptoms of what's being called long COVID. The moment that we realized that there was something happening was the fact that the participants were coming in and they were telling us that they were continuing to have symptoms and that we were hearing about it in the media. And then we read the paper from Italy Quando gli altri ancora stavano iniziando a vedere i primi pazienti, noi il 21 aprile abbiamo iniziato a vedere in follow up i pazienti. La prima osservazione che è venuta fuori e che abbiamo pubblicato a giugno, perché se uno riguarda la storia adesso del long covid ne parlano tutti, ma la prima osservazione che noi l'abbiamo chiamata persistent symptom. In Seattle, where the first U.S. cases were reported, researchers began one of the first studies of long COVID in August of 2020. We thought, well, we have a really unique opportunity here because we do have a group of patients who have been followed from the very beginning, and it wouldn't be difficult to simply ask them. Nearly a third of people in this study show lingering symptoms up to nine months after diagnosis. We were surprised at how often people reported ongoing symptoms so far out from their infection because uh, I think what is unique about our cohort is that people are pretty young, pretty healthy, and 85% of them had just very mild COVID and were not in the hospital and another handful had no symptoms at all. I went to all sorts of doctors. I went to my family doctor. I went to a pulmonologist, a gastroenterologist. They couldn't find anything and they thought that I basically had anxiety. I've had some doctors accuse me of being aggressive. I've been asked about drug use more times than I ever care to recall. As a woman and as a Black woman, um, I understand the history of discrimination when it comes to health care in this country, but I never really quite knew until it knocked on my door. I remember seeing the fear on the doctor's faces when I went into the ER and they saw what was happening but they couldn't find any answers on the scans and were just, I could hear them outside my room being like, I just wish she had a concussion. That's what one of them said, I just wish we could understand what's happening. It was about, at that point, two months out that I realized I wasn't on a slow, getting better, just taking a wild trajectory that it was something else entirely. And so our plan is to go back to those samples from the very early days and to look and see if we can find a certain immune signature, a certain inflammatory signature 
something that could help us understand and predict the development of long COVID. As patients grow desperate for answers, the NIH is spending a billion dollars to study long COVID, and an increasing number of clinics are focused on finding treatments. Talking to a doctor at the post-COVID clinic is very helpful. He's been putting me through a lot of specific tests, and we found that my lungs and my heart are severely reduced in their capacity. He said, I have the same fitness and health levels as someone who's been in the hospital for a long-term stay. I I mean, I was in this room fuming because I was like, well, damn, if this is happening to me and I have health insurance and I have a career, then I can't imagine what is happening to another woman who looks like me, who may not be able to articulate every single thing that's happening in her body. I reached out to local politicians. I started to write reviews about doctors on Google. And then I started to use social media. In one year, nearly 30 million Americans have tested positive for COVID-19. Even if just 10% of those people infected by the virus develop long-term symptoms, it's likely to have a tremendous impact on the healthcare system and on caregivers. You know, the way I think about it is like, no one wants to be sick in their 20s but also no one wants to be a caretaker in their 20s. I kind of sat my housemates down and I was like, okay, I need a lot of help. If days are really bad, that means like helping me drink water, helping me squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube, um, helping me floss. And then I kind of go to sleep and start it over again. And how long has this been going on? It's been about five months now. I would say um, by the time we hit roughly six months in is when it felt like it wasn't going to end. I've been married to my wife, Shania, for seven years. She did everything. You know I mean? She kept track of all the school stuff, teachers, doctors, dentists, all those appointments, all that stuff. And I was always the friend and the sister and the cousin who remembered birthdays. And this past year, I, I forgot my mom's birthday. Since, you know, late March, She hasn't been able to do almost anything. I can't be away for more than an hour. There was a near weekly occurrence of one of my kids asking, Mom, are you dying? But while that's happening, the house is getting messier. Things are falling apart. Faucets are leaking. Like, just like feeling like you're just losing a grip on everything. No matter how much I do, I can't do enough. It's cleaning things up until like the minute, you know, and and I go to sleep and that's a good time to catch up with your partner. My brain's going, how quickly can I fall asleep? Because I know I have to wake up and do this all over again. Don't get up, pal. We refinanced our home. Right now we're probably close to 40,000 in the hole. I feel like we've kind of avoided talking about the future because it's a really tricky subject and it's very uncomfortable. I think we're all still dreaming together. We all are talking about when we all get the vaccine and I get better. But in all honesty, I have no idea. I feel like part of me is looking at my life in the past. Like, oh, I'm so glad I had all these experiences. I'm so glad that I got to do all these things because I don't know if I'll get to do them again. For me, I cannot work right now. I I don't even know when I'll be able to work again or if I'll be able to work again. So I think that it's important for Black women to know how um, important long COVID is, but how dangerous it can be. I don't know that we could have ever anticipated that my husband would now have a partner that may be chronically ill for the rest of her life and that he might he might stay in this caretaker role. So sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but it's it's really hard because that's not what either of us signed up for. 